So Bitcoin, what exactly is, first of all, a cryptocurrency? Because that's something that you mentioned just now. What exactly is that? Right. So a cryptocurrency is a uh, internet currency which is run by an algorithm which is secured by cryptography. I see. Right. Uh, cryptography being the, uh, the science of uh, keeping secrets. Wow, so, okay. Yeah. So who, who writes these? Like uh, other developers? Are they math, mathematicians? Right. Well, um, obviously the people that are writing these things and contributing to these things are you know, n uh, knowledgeable in the field. Uh, but uh, all these projects are open source, so fathomably anybody can contribute. So it's just like up on, bit on gu uh, GitHub. Yeah, pretty wow. much. Wow, literally, yep. I could just go out and contribute my little yep. useless portion to yep. Bitcoin. Yep. So neat. Yeah, yeah. So far, I think uh, Bitcoin, when you check on their GitHub, there's around 700 to 750 contributors around the world. Wow. To, to secure that network, yeah. yeah. That's okay, okay. Yeah. Any, any people that I might have heard the name of? Any reputable? Mm, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, are crypto cryptographists, uh, like, you know, very, like, reputable? Like, are they famous? I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't really <laughs> yeah. say if that's the case. But, um, yeah, I mean, Elon Musk isn't working on this stuff. It's okay. definitely, like, a, a ground-up sort of thing. Right, okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how does this stuff get into circulation? How do people get together and say, we're going to make a currency and just get people to start using it? Right. So uh, I guess we could go into how the first one came along, right, which was Bitcoin. Right. Um, Bitcoin uh, was pretty much developed in the shadows. There was a guy with a pseudonym handle on a uh, open source uh, forum called Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay. And uh, he was he was asking people and talking to people. He's like, "Hey, I have this idea of making a, a decentralized uh, currency on the internet." Right. Um, to us now, it's like, okay, that makes sense. But back then, people were like, "Oh, I don't know if this is possible." There have been times before where it was tried, but the government has always been able to shut it down because right. it was all centralized. Right. Um, so his 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 goal was to make it decentralized and, and consensus based and, and get all that going, right? Mm -hmm. um, so on the forum, he talked to people and he got it going, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, he posted the white paper, which laid out all the technology and, and everything, and and then the, he started the he started the the, the protocol right. um, shortly after that, and uh, it was off and running ever since. So white paper is like a blueprint. A blueprint slash uh, business plan slash basically anything anybody needs to know from the founder about it. Wow, okay, yeah. so yeah. very thorough. Yeah. Why? Why did he feel like this needed to happen? Well, um, it was around the time of the 2008-2009 financial crisis. And oh. actually, um, on, on Bit Bitcoin and on, on, th on these cryptocurrencies, uh, you can actually store information mm -hmm. besides currency. And uh, he posted uh, on the first, the first instance of that currency, which is called the Genesis block, he stored an article from uh, the UK Times uh, um, front pages about how the bank, uh, Wall Street was uh, bailed out by the government I see, um, I see. And, and the taxpayers and everything like that. So clearly his intent was to like, uh, you know, rip uh, the power of the currency away from Wall Street and government and give it to the people. Okay. So that was his plan. All right. So now that Bitcoin actually is up and running, it's been going for how long now? Uh, since 2008, 2009. 2008, so that's 2008. about eight years. Yeah. Right, right. Almost so nine, yeah. Wow, so it's pretty solidified. It's not going away anytime soon, do you think? Uh, no, I mean that's uh, the magic of this stuff in open source like projects is that at the end of the day, as long as some some person is running code on their computer, it's alive. Right. And uh, for it to go away, everybody in the network would need to you know drop it, and at the same time the code would need to disappear, and people wouldn't want it. So, I mean that's why it's been so strong for so long is because everyone's like part of it. Right. You know? Yeah. Okay. So how d how does someone like me, who knows nothing yeah. about Bitcoin, right? Uh, how do I get a hold of it, and why would I want any of it. Right. So that's one of the, the challenges of explaining what cryptocurrency is and why it's important, right? Because for, for me to explain to you why it's important for you to have, I have to explain to you why traditional financial systems are bad. We all know 2008, 2009 was pretty, was pretty, was pretty horrible. But like we kind of blame it on like subprime and like all that type of stuff. But like the, in the bigger picture, a lot of people can explain like, you know, it's just a fault of the financial system right, right. in general. Yeah. So what are the negative ramifications of starting a cryptocurrency? What are the, how, can, how can criminals use Bitcoin to their advantage against the you know, general right. world? Right. Well, I mean, to be honest, it gives them the freedom to do whatever they want. Um, like, you know, if you are a drug dealer and you have issues with, you know, going and, you know, transacting because, you know, government's going to come after you and they control, it, they control the money by the banks and, you know, you're doing drug, dealing drugs and, you know, your counterparty has, like, you know, cash or no cash and it's hard to do it. With Bitcoin now, it's like all it takes is like, oh, you need to generate a public-private key pair, which we all know is like pretty simple, and then uh, just send it to them and send it oh, back. That's it. Very simple. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, relative, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So what? So then the government, if they're probably not so happy about this then? It's interesting. There's different, uh, from the people I've talked to, I've heard, I've heard many different things, um, but it seems to be the consensus is that uh, it comes from this one guy named uh, Ed Edmund Moy. He was the uh, head of the U.S. Mint back uh, during Bush's time. And he's really into cryptocurrencies, and he's like a gold and silver guy. So like he's like about like hard money and stuff. Right. Um, and for him, uh, when I asked him that, he basically said like most governments really really like it. They're actually very positive on it. The only people, the most of the people that don't like it within governments are like central bankers. Right. Um, of course. Yeah. Regulators like it because you because you can um, track people. Like it's a public like system which shows everyone's activity. Right. And regulators like you mean I could track like every single person on the network and what they're doing? Awesome. Yeah. You know, but that takes away power from the central banks who create the money. Okay. So, yeah. So, if I were to go and decide to just jump into this Bitcoin, uh, where could I use it? Could right. I use it anywhere? Could I use it at Be Best Buy? Could I use mm -hmm, it to pay mm -hmm. my tuition? Yeah. So that's one of the hurdles right now too is that it's a peer-to-peer -peer currency. So at the end of the day, like as long as someone else will take it, then you can use it. But it's still relatively, you know, underused by the mass public. Like, you know, you have to literally find somebody who's willing to accept it in order to in order to exchange with them. There are uh, things being done right now where uh, like people will, on the back end, uh, give out uh, like debit or credit cards in which like you can store Bitcoin on that and then they'll change it to US dollars for you if you need to. So like you have a Bitcoin account and then you have a debit card and then if you want to go buy something in cash, uh, you just go to the store and use that card and then in the back end you'll have somebody do that for you in, in the transmitting of like Bitcoin to US dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but it, that process is still very frictioned right now, definitely. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So what do you see in the future of Bitcoin? Um, Five, 10, 20 years? It's, it's, it's tough to say. I mean, I, I definitely think that it's going to change the world in some way, somehow. It already is in, in a lot of extents. Um, <coughs> if you go to places like Cyprus in 2011. Cyprus, what, what's, what and where is that? Cyprus is a, a small country on like the coast of the Mediterranean, I believe. Okay. And um, they had a, a banking crisis in 2011 mm -hmm. in which uh, the banks, they were broke, and they decided to do a bail-in in which uh, they cut off their, the people that had accounts in the bank. They mm -hmm. basically told them, you can't pull your money out. And that cleared their balance sheets. Mm -hmm. And um, the government actually partook in that as well. Because you know, banks and the government, they're very close together. And the government knew if that the banks failed, then like, the country's going to fail. Right. And so they pretty much like, stole the money from the people. Um, when that happened, uh, they were like, how are we going to get around this? How are we going to transact? How are we going to even do business? And, right. uh, at that time, the, the price of Bitcoin spiked up around like 200, 300% because people were starting to use Bitcoin as an alternative. Right. So it's definitely going to have a place as an alternative to, to modern day financial systems. Um, but I think the, the real game changer is uh, not so much its, its place as uh, economic and financial tool. It's going to be more a technological breakthrough because there's two things to think about. One, this is an instance of programmable money. Right. Now you're able to program business logic into money. Right. And now that, what does that do? That tears down lots and lots of industries and businesses. Most, most services revolves around handling money. Lawyers mm -hmm. uh, delegate, you know, what's going on between, you know, two people. And at the end of the day, that's just an if statement, mm -hmm. like on, on computer code. It's right. like, if this happens, then that happens. And now you can actually program that into the money. And now if the other person accepts that, then now you have a contract that's binding. Right. And now you don't need a lawyer, you don't need government, there's, no, there's all this overhead and normal things that happen to go away. Accounting is super easy now because you're going to be able to just look at the ledger and these balance sheets and you're just, you know everything. And it's just like, oh, all I got to do is like query a database and then here we go. Like, I don't need an accountant anymore, I don't need to pay him all this money. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, it's, it's, it's a game-changing technological breakthrough. Querying a database, where is this mm -hmm. database? So, these databases, and this is what I'm getting into next, which is, uh, the other big technological breakthrough, which often gets unnoticed, is that it's a, it's the first instance in which decentralized consensus has been possible. So it's really hard to get a whole bunch of people to agree on anything. It's really hard to get two people to agree on anything. How do you keep those two people honest, even in, you know, modern times? Like, well, we've done that by, like, you know, pointing a gun at them or, like, doing something after the fact. Right. Now, with the technology uh, behind it, we have, at least Satoshi, figured out how to economically incentivize people to all be honest within a system. And I think that's a game changing because not only is that changing the value of exchange and so that you can trust anybody in this network, but now you can use that as a tool to do other things. 
Mm -hmm. So now, like, if you wanted to send, like, a very important picture or something, or something very important information, like, you don't need to trust Dropbox or email to do things. Now right. it's, like, cryptographically secure, and everyone agrees on it, and you know it's safe. Mm -hmm. So it's going to change. It's going to change a lot of processes and how the world looks going forward on okay. the technological space. Yeah. So how long before I can use this in the Apple Store? How long before I can go into a Walmart or Target and buy milk with it? I, it's hard to say. I mean, the other nature of it too is that it's completely contradictory to like the current model, the current financial system. The current financial system is telling you like, hey, like you know, we'll hold on to your money and we'll do everything for you, and if something goes wrong, we'll fix it, but we'll also abuse it sometimes. Uh, right. You know what I mean? And like they don't like removing that power because that that siloing of power is the reason that they're in business. Right. And so it's 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 definitely hard hard to to get some people across that that threshold, but um, right. I mean, right now people can go use it. You can it's open source, so you can just go onto GitHub. You can go onto these these protocols and these currencies and do whatever you want with it as of now. Um, but I know what you mean. Going into mass markets and doing it that way, I think it will take some time. There mm -hmm. needs to be there's a huge learning curve that needs to happen. So Definitely. what's the value of one Bitcoin? So currently, so it is very volatile. Um, back, I mean, Bitcoin when it first came out was zero dollars. And then right. at its high a couple years ago, uh, in 2012, 2013, it was um, uh, 1,200 bucks. Wow. So there are people that bought $500 worth of Bitcoin. One Bitcoin was $1,200. $1,200. Um, so there are people out there who bought Bitcoin at like 10 cents, 20 cents, forgot about it, and then you know maybe bought a hundred dollars worth, and then all of a sudden now they're millionaires. That definitely happened. Wow. Um, and uh, currently today, as it stands, Bitcoin is seven hundred eighty bucks. Um, since then, Very good. So, so yeah, since two thousand twelve, since two thousand thirteen, it crashed down to one eighty, and then it came back. Um, so you know. It's very volatile. Was yeah. it much easier to get Bitcoin back then? In, I mean, not necessarily financially, but just to get your hands on it, to get in the game. I mean, it was actually much harder. Much because, harder back then. Yeah, because like back then you had to kind of just, you know, go onto some weird forum and like message somebody and be like, hey, like, like hey, you got any of that Bitcoin stuff? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sort of. And then you went in and you had to go and like meet, arrange a date and, you know, figure out some other stuff. Now it's pretty simple. Now there's people that like, you know, they do it like, you know, you would a. Uh, a bank or something like that, where they have like you know they have a bunch of bitcoins and then they'll sell it to you. They'll you they just straight sell you bitcoin yeah. and you do it just like with any uh, currency exchange and try to make money off of it that way. Right, right. So how is it that I would just go and get some? Do I need a computer? Do I just go still? Do I still talk to somebody on a forum? Well, um, in order to buy some, uh, yeah, you need to have a computer in order to transact with somebody, or nah, not necessarily actually. So. It's um, for the average person. You would need to go to a website and yeah, transact just like you would on Amazon, and then in right. return you would get you would get your bitcoins. Um, there are people that that do the whole entire process for you, and you log on to their site and they they do it all on the back end. Right. But you're trusting them with holding your bitcoins, and right. and that has been a, a, a serious risk over the past few years. And too. so I hear this term a lot: mining bitcoin, mining for bitcoins. What mm -hmm. what does that process involve? Can so I do it? Yeah, anyone can do it. Um, it may not be profitable for Bitcoin, but for other cryptocurrencies, it is. So this is so so the whole like consensus model I was telling you about that breakthrough that Satoshi did to get everyone to agree on like the state of like transactions and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't cheat another person by saying no, uh, you didn't ha you didn't make that money. I have that money, you know, um, which is you know in a lot of ways what like central banks do is they tell you like hey like you know I print you know this is the money that you see, but on the back end I'm giving it to some bank to bail them out or something like that. Um, mining is the process of, of, of ensuring that everyone is honest. And it's a little complicated, but like in the easiest terms to say it, it's uh, um, everybody, there are a bunch of computers all over the planet which mm -hmm. are arbitrar arbitrarily solving an uh, algorithm. Right. Um, an algorithm which is actually very simple, but then the difficulty level of that makes it so that uh, an intense amount of electricity and hashing power is required. Okay. So, uh, so here's another term I've been hearing a lot. What's a blockchain? Right, so um, blockchain is the uh, technology behind Bitcoin in which uh, is used to secure the network. So Bitcoin is essentially just a ledger. That ledger, it gets updated every 10 minutes by miners. It's a ledger that gets agreed upon every 10 minutes, essentially. Okay. Yeah. All right, so just some final questions here. Sure. Do you have Bitcoin? Of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can um, I ask how much? Uh, no, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, Enough for me to feel comfortable out in the future, and uh, 
It's one of those things where it's like I, I believe in it very deeply, and uh, I am putting more than what most people say is rational. Right. But uh, at, I got to go with my gut at the end of the day. But if I were to tell other people, I'd say like you know don't don't bet the farm on it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Be, be be conservative because it is very risky. Okay. Yeah. Last question. Bitcoin. Yeah. Ultimately, mm -hmm. good or bad? I think both. Um, neutral. Not necessarily neutral. I think it will increase the amount of good and it will increase the amount of bad. Hopefully the amount of good overwhelms the bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Joe. That was sure. very informative. Yeah.